Do you want to find an interesting tech discussion chat or a teammate to play with? Join Hardware Lab Discord server using the link in the description. RTX 3060 is a sweet spot mid-range GPU. It has enough VRAM, I'm looking at U3060 Ti. It has full PCI interface, hello 6650XT, and the chip configuration itself is not bad. So it is definitely a strong Full HD and Quad HD GPU, but can it do 4K? Maybe even 4K with ray tracing? Hello and welcome back to Hardware Lab. Ok, let's talk about testing methodology. All the games will run at 4K resolution. We'll try to avoid using DLSS, FSR or other reconstruction where it is possible since we are testing 4K. However, reconstruction techniques are quite useful to make unplayable games look and play well on 4K screen, so they will be turned on if necessary. For each game we will use two graphic settings combinations. First, we'll try to achieve maximum image quality level with a target of 30 FPS. Second, we'll use around 60 as a target. Of course, if targeting 60 is almost impossible and overall quality is a lot better with averages lower than 60, we will leave it like that. One more thing to mention, at 4K res the screen capturing costs a lot on 3060 in terms of performance. So as always, all the data collected for the graphs were done on a separate run without screen recording. So don't get confused if the drops you see in benchmarks don't match exactly the numbers that are stated in the final graph. And finally, are you ready for some 4K mid-range benchmarks? The 30fps fidelity settings in true colors that we set use Premax preset with turned on ray tracing and the frame rate is freely stable. However, some drops to lower 30s can appear in cutscenes, so we decided not to go beyond this preset. 60 at 4K is also achievable in this game on the custom mix of low, medium, and high settings without ray tracing. Definitely, this game is not the most hardware demanding, but the fact that mid-range 3060 can do 4K is quite impressive. Moreover, take a look at VRAM consumption, it looks like 12GB of VRAM is kinda useful. This game is known as hardware demanding, and 12 gigs of VRAM helps a lot here. 8 and even 10 GB GPUs fail even to load HD textures when turned on, but 12 GB 3060 is doing completely fine. In the case of 30 FPS mode with native 4K and enabled ray tracing reflections and shadows, all 12 gigs of VRAM are fully utilized, while the performance is pretty stable. 60 FPS in this game, however, requires FSR Ultra quality to be turned on. Yes, it's not an 84K, but the game still looks and performs pretty good on these settings. That include a mix of medium and high, and of course insanely detailed HD textures turned on. Hello RTX 3070! Ghostwire Tokyo was tested with 30fps river tuner lock in case of fidelity mode. This is because the game without lock feels super stuttery. Moreover, it uses DLSS set on quality mode because native 4K ray tracing 30 is almost impossible to achieve on 3060. 
60fps mode that doesn't use RT requires even DLSS balanced with the settings really far from maximum. Technically, 3060 can serve a 4K screen in this game, but remember that internal res with DLSS balance is not even Quad HD and the settings are pretty low. Recently released PC version of Spider-Man feels alright on 3060 with a 4K screen, and the memory buffer is almost fully utilized. Yes, it is not a native 4K, it uses the LSS quality on both modes, but the 30fps fidelity mode includes both ray tracing reflections and shadows, and very high settings. Impressive result, and very enjoyable to play at 4K. 60fps mode requires both turning off ray tracing and lowering the settings a lot, and even with that, 3060 doesn't actually reach 60 often. The game still looks alright, but I would definitely prefer playing at 30. If you are alright with 30fps, Hellblade allows you to turn on ray tracing reflections that looks good even on low and yes, in native 4K without either DLSS or FSR. But if you want to reach 60, you definitely need to turn off RT. Moreover, DX12 runs a bit worse on the 60fps mode settings, so we decided to test that under DX11. The VRAM consumption is pretty low and even 8GB is enough for this game. Forza Horizon 5 runs extremely well in terms of reaching 30. All the settings are set to their maximum value, and only ray tracing, that is now available in gameplay with the recent patch, set it to Ultra instead of Extreme. For the 60fps mod, the mix of medium and high settings was turned on to maintain the balance between quality and performance. Ambient occlusion was forced on, and the image didn't look that bad. Yes, during the benchmark it is not often to see 60, but Forza's benchmark is a lot more demanding than most of the game itself, so 60 on these settings will hold for 90% of time. Pretty good result for a mid-range GPU. And one more thing, take a look at the 30fps mode's VROM consumption. It's over 10 gigabytes again. The VRAM usage of Teardown is pretty low due to really unusual rendering nature of the game. 30fps at 4K is achievable on maxed out settings, but to get 60, 3060 requires a 75% rendering option that uses some sort of reconstruction and medium settings with disabled effects. Both fidelity and performance modes don't drop lower than 30 and 60 respectively on the test segment without recording.
You didn't expect this game running in native 4K, did you? Like Tell Requiem squeezes all the available resources from modern GPUs, but rewards owners of high-end PCs with unbelievable visuals. This is not the case for Turkey 60, since running it at 30 FPS already requires using DLSS performance mode with high settings and ultra textures. Reaching 60 is impossible even on medium and DLSS ultra performance, so there is definitely nothing to do with 4K. But still, DLSS reconstruction on a 4K screen definitely looks a lot better than just a low-res blurry image. As I said, nothing to do with 4K, but a 4K monitor paid with 3060 still gives you an advantage. Perfect 30 and even almost perfect 45 is achievable on maxed out at 4K in For Honor. Great thing for 40 to 60 VRS monitors owners like me. The game is pretty old now, but still looks good. 60 FPS, however, requires to drop to medium and to 75% scalar with some internal reconstruction. It works alright, frame rate only drops when the screen is full of alpha effects, but yeah, definitely not an 84K. Quantum Break was tested using a Steam version of the game that runs under DX11, which means, theoretically, the performance numbers in Microsoft Store version could be higher. Anyway, this game is still super hardware demanding, but looks excellent even today in terms of graphics quality. We are using a mix of medium, high and ultra settings for both fidelity and performance modes. The difference between them is Remedy's custom temporal upscaling technique that is turned on on performance mode. At 4K it looks pretty good actually. Oh, and take a look at VROM consumption. Yes, it can be over 8 GB even in 2016 game at 4K. In Watch Dogs Legion we decided to test 3 modes, but let's start with the 60fps one. On high settings, with ultra textures, most of the time frame rate is above 60, at least without recording. However, to achieve that result, DLSS quality is required. Without DLSS, even medium settings struggle to reach 60, and going under medium sounds like a pretty bad option. So yeah, this is definitely not an 84K, but it is a good compromise between quality and performance. Quality non-ray tracing 30fps mode, however, includes native 4K rendering with very high settings and ultra textures. The lowest 27fps drop doesn't feel good, but it is obviously a worst case scenario, so it's fine. The image is very clear and looks great. 30fps RT mode requires balanced DLSS, however, it includes not medium but high ray tracing option, so for those who want to enjoy RT reflections, it's a pretty good compromise. Remember that on ultra textures, this game has a lot of stuttering on everything with 8 gigs of VRAM, including 3070, 3060 Ti, 6650 XT, and so on.
Well, after all that benchmarks, there are a few questions. Should we consider RTX 3060 as a 4K GPU? Of course yes and of course no. Uh, it always depends. Uh, there shouldn't be any right answer to the question like this. There is no GPU in the world that we can objectively consider as the starting point for 4K. Some people hate how DLSS or FSR looks. Others can't play on 30 and even 60, they want to have 75 at least, even in single player story games. Others don't play single player story games, they are only interested in competitive gameplay. But saying, alright, 3060 is definitely not for 4K or, you know, 12 gigs of VRAM are useless here, is definitely wrong. You can play only in Full HD and you can accept lowering textures, which makes 12GB useless for you. You can play Counter-Strike and aim for a very high FPS rather than enjoying modern AAA games and you should choose the GPU that suits your personal requirements. But for example, I really enjoyed playing Far Cry with ultra textures because they look stunning. This is something that owners of 3060 Ti, 3070, 3070 Ti, 6650 XT, etc. just cannot run at all, even in Full HD. So, as well as there are no universal pie recipe or universal best sandwich in Grex, there are no universal good GPU. Some prefer beef, some cheese and some are vegan. A different pie and different ultimate sandwich for personal needs of all these people is required. Same thing with GPUs, but with one minor exception. More VRAM makes GPU more future proof and I see lack of VRAM on 3060Ti to 3080Ti as a problem because in a lot of gaming tasks they can struggle even today, even before the next 40 series midrange alternative is released. If I'm ok with that and anyway I want to upgrade in a year or two, should I buy these GPUs with lack of VRAM? As soon as you're aware of all the disadvantages? Sure, this is your choice. Maybe 3060Ti suits you in terms of its price, performance and configuration. Our task as a reviewers is not to say one is better than another. Our task is to show the difference and demonstrate advantages and disadvantages for you to make a decision. The idea of this video was born in our Discord server while arguing about the usefulness of the 12GB buffer on 3060 and its abilities to run 4K. So if you want to take part in this kind of discussions, join our server, the link is in the description. And as usual, stay up to date with HL. Oh, I can't wait reading a lot of comments that DLSS and FSR are not real 4K. Yeah, they are not, but they are really useful to benefit from a 4K display and they make it a pretty good idea to use a mid-range GPUs on a 4K screen, so don't type that, okay? I see you wanna type that. Don't do this. Come on, dude. Do not type about DLSS and FSR, alright?